Operational amplifiers or op amps can be used in circuits to make oscillators and in this case we're looking at a square wave oscillator and if you've looked if you've seen a previous video you know a little bit about comparators you'll notice that this half of the circuit here is a Schmidt trigger based comparator if we just consider this as our input we've got the negative feedback from the output back to the non-inverting terminal the voltage divider between uh, voltage divider dividing the V out to create the, the, v, the v plus, the voltage at the non-inverting terminal. And we've got an RC circuit over here on the other side. And this combination of these two things creates a comparator-based relaxation oscillator. Now in general, a relaxation oscillator is a dynamic system where the oscillator is going to bounce back and forth between two states. And what happens is the, the oscillator is trying to get into a state of equilibrium going in one direction and then it reaches some kind of threshold which causes the equilibrium to be in, a, in another state so it's going to try to work towards that equilibrium and in this case the equilibrium that we're talking about is a charged capacitor so the way that this is going to work and the way we're going to see that it works is that this capacitor is going to be charged and discharged and alternating back and forth and that rate of charging and discharging is going to determine how quickly this oscillator oscillates so I've redone the oscillator circuit down here and I put in a couple of values so you can see that the voltage divider network here is 6k ohm and 6k ohms and my source voltage is 12 volts for the positive supply and negative 12 volts for the negative supply we're gonna walk through what happens in, in two in two ways first we'll look at it just in I'll, I'll write out exactly what what happens as as uh, this oscillator bounces back and forth between the two states and then we'll look at things graphically so let's assume that at the start, when the when this oscillator is turned on, we'll call that point time zero, the voltage across the capacitor is zero volts. And let's assume that the output is 12 volts. Now, what's going to happen if this point is at 12 volts? A couple of things that's going to make this point here 6 volts and it's going to make this capacitor want to charge up to 6 volts or charge up to up to 12 volts I should say but we'll see that it's only able to reach up to reach 6 volts so at that point in time the voltage across the capacitor well, starting at time 0 is going to be equal to 1 minus e to the negative t over tau times 12 volts. It's trying to charge up to 12 volts and here's my charging capacitor equation. So this is the cap is charging. But when the voltage across the capacitor equals 6 volts or maybe a little bit more than 6 volts that's making the inverting terminal here higher voltage than the non-inverting terminal. So maybe I should write that. Write that instant that the voltage across the capacitor becomes greater than 6 volts. The inverting terminal is more than the non-inverting terminal. And so what happens is the voltage at the output is going to be switching to minus 12 volts. The voltage switches to minus 12 volts. Now this, this capacitor has 6 volts across it and it wants to discharge or charge down to minus 12 volts and at the same time since we have minus 12 volts here we'll, the voltage that we have at the non-inverting terminal is going to become minus 6 volts so the cap discharges and the charging the discharging equation or the, the, the equation for charging or discharging capacitor if we want to make it as generic as possible the voltage across the capacitor is going to be equal to whatever the initial voltage was plus what it's charging to, what it's trying to charge up to or down to minus the initial voltage times 1 minus e to the negative t over tau. So hopefully you remember this equation or, or seeing the equation refreshes your memory. So this is for charging or discharging capacitor. So this is actually the same equation as this one, except that we our initial voltage is zero, and our final voltage is twelve. So figure if you plug those numbers into this particular equation, you'd be able to get this equation.
So in our particular example, this is going to be voltage across the capacitor equals the initial voltage, which is 6 volts, plus the final voltage, which is it's trying to charge down to minus 12 volts, minus the initial voltage of 6, times 1 minus e to the negative t over tau. And if we simplify this down, this is going to be 18, 18 e to the minus t over tau minus 12 volts. So that would be my that's my discharging equation for the capacitor. So it's going to charge at that discharge at that rate, but at the point when the voltage across the capacitor becomes less than minus 6 volts. So that in other words, the voltage at the non the voltage at the inverting terminal becomes less than the voltage at the non-inverting terminal. We are going to have another switch. The V out is going to switch to 12 volts. And the voltage at the non-inverting terminal is going to switch to 6 volts. So the capacitor is going to start charging again. It's going to charge up, try to charge up to 12 volts again. And it's going to be the exact same equation, but we're just ever changing our initial and our final voltage. So the voltage across the capacitor is going to be equal to 12 minus 18 e to the negative t over tau. And it's going to keep charging, and once it reaches 6 volts, that means the voltage at the inverting terminal is greater than the voltage at the non-inverting terminal, so the output is going to switch again back to minus 12 volts. So we're going to have this oscillation between 12 volts and minus 12 volts at the output as the voltage across the capacitor charges up to 6 volts and then down to minus 6 volts, up to 6 volts, down to minus 6 volts. So we're going to look at what happens graphically in this circuit as well. And what I've got here is a graph of the voltage over time, and we're going to look at, simultaneously, we'll look at the voltage at the output, the voltage at the non-inverting terminal and the voltage across the capacitor. So what I said is at time zero, the voltage across the capacitor is going to start at zero volts. The voltage at the output is going to start at 12 volts, so it's going to be up here. And since we're at 12 volts at the output, we'll be at six volts on the non-inverting terminal. So voltage in the capacitor is going to start charging up towards 12 volts. So it's trying to reach up to 12 volts, but what's going to happen is it starts charging and then it reaches the 6 volt point right about there. And so when the voltage in the capacitor just gets just above 6 volts, the output voltage is going to the output voltage is going the output voltage is going to switch from 12 volts to minus 12 volts. And since the output voltage switched from 12 to minus 12, the voltage at the non-inverting terminal is going to switch from 6 to minus 6. And let's draw both of these out a little ways here. And then the voltage at the capacitor now wants to discharge towards minus 12 volts. It's trying to get to minus 12 volts. And it's going to follow a similar sort of pattern, but this time discharging. And it's going to take some time, but it will eventually reach minus 6 volts. And when it gets just a little bit beyond minus 6 volts, then the voltage at the non-inverting terminal, will, uh, the inverting terminal will be less than the voltage at the non-inverting terminal, and therefore my V out is going to switch back to 12 volts. And at the same time, the voltage at the non-inverting terminal, due to that voltage divider, is going to switch to plus 6 volts. And now the voltage on the capacitor has, is at minus 6 volts, and now it wants to charge back up to 12 volts. So it's going to start charging, and it's not going to reach 12 volts because at 6 volts, now the voltage at the inverting terminal is greater than the voltage at the non-inverting terminal, so we're going to have the switching occur again. The output's going to switch from 12 to minus 12, and the inverting terminal voltage will switch from 6 volts to minus 6 volts. And you can see that this is just going to keep repeating itself. Uh, capacitor discharging, capacitor charging, discharging, charging, and I'm going to get at the output this square wave with an amplitude of a peak amplitude of 12 volts, but it's switching between 12 volts and minus 12 volts. The next thing, the thing that 
we really want to figure out, and the thing that we want to know for this circuit is how much is how long does it take for the capacitor to discharge, and how long does it take for the capacitor to charge? And it turns out that these are going to be equal, but so two time two t is going to be equal to t or the period of this oscillator. And of course, the frequency of the oscillator is going to be equal to 1 over the period. So the inverse of the period is going to be equal to the frequency. So let's call this point T2 and this point T3. So how long to go from T2 to T3? Well, we can go back to our discharging equation down here. The discharging equation down here. And we want to know at what time is the voltage across the capacitor going to be at minus 6 volts? So what we want to do is solve this equation. So at minus 6 volts, it's going to be equal to 18e to the negative t over tau minus 12. And we want, tau is just going to be the RC time constant here, and we want to solve for t. So if you go through a number of steps, and I'll leave it to you as an exercise in algebra, to figure out what T is going to be, but T works out to 1.099 tau. Similarly, if we call this point right there T4, and we want to know how long it takes to go from T3 to T4. So that's going down to this charging equation right here. Um, the, at voltage in the capacitor is equal to 6 volts, We've got our equation, 6 volts equals 12 minus 18 e to the negative t over tau. Tau is the RC time constant again, and we want to find t. So if you do some, some algebra steps, and again I'll leave it up to you to do those steps in algebra, the time is going to be equal to 0 point, or 1.099 times tau. So therefore the period is going to be 2 or it's going to be equal to this t plus this t, which is just going to be 2 times 1.099 tau. So it's equal to approximately 2.2 tau. And then the frequency is going to be equal to 1 over 2.2 tau. Now this is specific to this kind of circuit where you have an equal voltage division between... Be, uh, so the, the voltage at the output gets cut in half because the two resistors are, are equal to each other. In the general case where the resistors dividing the output voltage to give it the non-inverting voltage where those resistors are not equal, it can be shown that the period for this relaxation oscillator is equal to 2 times the resistance in the RC circuit times the capacitance <clears throat> times the natural log of 1 plus 2R2 over R1. So this would be what the, this would be the period. And then of course the frequency would be equal to the inverse of the period. And this is this formula will apply to the previous example. We just went through and, and figured out the individual the charging and discharging times for the capacitors and to figure out what the, what the period was. But if you were just to use generic values for these R val for these R1 and R2 values and the VD and VS and the RC and the C you could show that the period is equal to 2 RC times C times the natural log of 1 plus 2 R2 over R1. So I hope you learned a little bit about relaxation oscillators and I'll see you in the next video.